Hey, it's Joe Glines, the Automator. You're going to see here that follows uh, a video that I did with Tom and Tank slash Charlie Simmons from the Auto Hockey Forum. Now, this particular excerpt, it's from a live hours thing, so you possibly have already seen this video. However, it was in the midst of, you know, two almost a, like I think a two-hour call, and I wanted to excerpt it because it was a really good content on APIs. And so... Also, so up here above my head, you can go to this URL, and if you do, before we jump into that video, you can see here, if you go to that one, it's actually a redirect, but it takes you to this page. And on this page, it's my API page, I have the, the API syntax writer, which is really cool. It writes helps you write auto hotkey syntax for API calls with auto hotkey, which is really cool, and I have videos on that, obviously. Fiddler, you know, this is the link to, you can download the Fiddler Everywhere syntax writer if you're using that. However, now Fiddler Everywhere costs money, so um, you might want to use the other one, the version that I had. Fiddler's pretty awesome, but if you scroll down here, I just want to point out these resources. Uh, there's a lot of tutorials, and we did a couple webinars, which should be somewhere in here. Let me see if I... Oh, the webinar's at the top. We had a great webinar. Uh, so that that's a it's a really great intro to API calls. I think that's a it's a really good one. Uh, and then here we have a lot of examples of using APIs. APIs are amazing. So I wanted to uh, you know include this in this thing. Now when I fade off here, we're going to come into that live conversation with Tom from Tab Nation, Charlie Simmons, or Tank from the Auto Hockey Forum. He's the admin there. Uh, Tank is amazing at uh, at a lot of things, but API calls. It was really interesting getting his perspective on this and um, kind of teach, talking through some stuff about how you can go about using them. So I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Okay, so some of my friends, yeah, this is little, some of my friend, not me, I'm, I'm just kidding, Richard, uh, want to scrape some information from an online English dictionary website. They are far more geeky than I am. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be, well, here's, the, and this is where it just gets a little confusing, right? And, and we have... Um, Jackie and I did a webinar on APIs, which I think is one of our best webinars we did because we talk about the differences between web scraping and API calls. Because the confusing part is, of course, a browser call, a re browser request to a web page is an API call. This is where it gets confusing. Uh, but you can, you know, you can, you could do the browser scraping or you could look at the browser's traffic and try to replicate that instead of actually using a, a, a real public API. Uh, and, and Tank, keep me honest if I'm, you know, like I said, this is all, I've just figured it out. Um, and then there's public APIs that they will make available. Those are the ones that, generally speaking, they have very generous, you know, numbers that you can ping and go against. Uh, and the data is returned in like a JSON string, typically now at least. And, and they're awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of uh, becoming a de facto kind of uh, response mechanism is a, 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 a JSON uh, response, but um, so so yes, the the public APIs is where the application owner says, "Hey, I know you don't want to do this through the website. Here's a way for you to get what you actually need that I'm not going to complain about. It's, it's lower overhead for the server, um, and um, I, I I'm not trying to uh, uh, control what you do with the information you've got." Um, the uh, a lot of what here's what a lot of people probably don't realize is that when you look at any web page, it's actually a uh, a series of requests that are executed by the main page itself. So if you look at index.html, uh, within it, uh, there is almost certainly a request to one or more JavaScript libraries. There's a request to pull in one or more uh, uh, cascading style sheets. Uh, there is uh, probably multiple requests for images uh, or, or even web fonts um, that are part of that. And then the rendering engine, which is the browser, you know, for Chrome, that's WebKits, uh, Internet Explorers, Trident, uh, Edge was uh, a fork of Trident uh, called Edge HTML, uh, but was replaced, uh, I guess, within the last year or so with Chromium's kit, WebKit. Uh, 
uh, so the web, so the, the rendering engine that is, uh, built into the, the browser of choice, um, is, uh, then executes the, the rendering of the page. And as part of that, it goes through and it says, Hey, there's a reference to this other content that I don't have yet. And it sends out another request for it and then, uh, applies those details to, to the page itself so that you get this pretty looking content that you've asked for. Um, but, but it's, it's rarely just one. And so the, the whole idea of using the web APIs is to figure out which one requested the actual data, which request actually had the data you wanted. Um, and then make that just that single isolated request with no browser, because if there's no rendering engine, it's not going to make the external requests occur. Um, there's, there's different, most people don't realize that there's different JavaScript engines uh, based on the browser. Uh, Chrome uses one called V8. I think, Tom, was I talking to you? I was talking to someone like a week ago when they were saying they had different versions of JavaScript that they were messing with. Was, was it, I thought it was you. Maybe not. Look in your face, I'd say no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we talked about JavaScript last week. Yep. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't during our public call, and I guess because we have, I don't think we spoke. Anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, the other thing, Tink, I was going to say was it's it's really it's great having your perspective of of, and I know you do both sides, right? But in this part, you're wearing the hat of the server side. Um, I hadn't really thought about it because I talked a lot in that webinar we did about when we do a browser request for a given page, and like you said, often it's, it's five to 15 or whatever different API calls that are pulling different types of data and all the stuff. And it's usually the files, like let's say it's at least a meg versus an API call, it's tiny, tiny files, right? I always represented it as, look how much smaller network traffic it is for us, right? What a great thing. But you made a really good point earlier too. It's Hey, the vendor actually likes it too. It's far less traffic for him as well. It, it, just... it, it is significantly less server overhead. Um, I, I was actually uh, about to, um, for the for the sake of, of the whole uh, conversation, I wanted to, um, and I'm doing this in a separate panel here, uh, you know, since since I, I have the power like he man, um, I, I can um, I, I have this ability to pull up all of the stuff that we have around Auto Hotkey just for the visual. Um, and uh, you know, it, it doesn't give anything away about our our the details of our security model for me to to, to share what some of this looks like though. Um, and, and I think it's I think it's beneficial for for people to to be able to see um, uh, because I, I don't uh, there's a lot of uh, even within the IT world there there's a lot of uh, uh, really bad I want to I want to. I, I use the synonym of superstitious responses. Um, it's not, it's not that they don't know any better or um, uh, that uh, they, they, they somehow think the internet works differently than it does. Um, it's that they imagine that there is going to be some some kind of mythical level of abuse that occurs that is going to give them an unexpected result, and and it's and it's based partially on the fact that it does happen, but it's not as frequent and prolific as uh, as the superstition would be, and and it's easy to deal with. It, it really is. It's easy to deal with when it does occur. Uh, so I, I really, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> uh, anyway, what you're, I mean, you're just talking about the basic traffic on the forum. Is that right? Well, so I, I was going to talk about what, what server traffic and, uh, and what, you know, when we talk about overhead on a server. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
I, I was gonna, I, I wanted to bring up some visualizations, uh, for folks so that, uh, it, it's, it's a little easy. It's a little easier when you can see the whole picture than it is to hear, you know, the schmucks talk about it. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, everyone likes pictures. Videos. They're more visual. Every, everybody likes pictures. All right. Um, so anyway, so uh, I, I guess uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, I want to make sure my view of the form doesn't give anything away that's inappropriate. <laughs> um, that's something okay. we were talking about at the beginning of this is, you know, <laughs> always making sure you're not sharing something you don't want to. <laughs> well, yeah, and now... Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, I, I have enough uh, corporate life experience to where um, I, I rarely forget that anymore. I, I do sometimes make mistakes, but it, it's not as common. Um, uh, throw that stuff into you. All right. So, so you know, this is somebody has, lo you know, I, I've loaded the, the actual uh, forum up. Uh, I'm going to hop over here to my network tab of, of the uh, – Dev tools. Uh, let's kill that. And uh, you know, just just going to the board index, right? All right. And, and so you your perception is you're loading one thing, okay? No. But but you're in fact loading all of these things, right? right. There, there's a lot going on. Um, and, and you know, you have this waterfall view here of. Uh, you know, when the request even started, right? You see there's there's kind of a, a, a growth pattern here, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, and, and I've done, and, sorry, I was going to say, I've done stuff with, with, with IE, but I'd be looking at this and I'd see the XHR request, you know, from one of them and go, wait a minute. You know, I can I can do that one on its own entirely and have it connected to that window, i.e. window, and not even have to have my credentials and all that crap. And oh, it's so awesome. Yeah. So, and, and then you can see here what what page uh, initiated the request. So remember, when I was talking about how the rendering engine yeah. loads some content and then sees where another request is needed and then makes a new request. Well, that, that's that's what you're tracking here. Okay, so so you, we're, we're seeing here where other content that was loaded by index.php actually had further requests down the chain, and um, so it, it's it's real easy to get lost in in the idea that everything has some something uh, special about it. Now, back to your point of the fet fetch XHR. Um, so, so what this really boils down to, uh, you know, and, and it's taken different versions and iterations throughout the history of the internet. You know, at first everybody was big on this idea of, uh, Ajax calls, um, um, and, and people didn't really like calling it Ajax for a while. Uh, and they wanted to make different versions of it. it didn't work the same in every browser, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It, it got kind of weird for a little bit. And, and it, they kind of standardized is, on this. Go ahead. Ajax is asynchronous JavaScript something, right? Is that right? Yeah, I, I don't even remember what it originally stood for. But the bottom line is, is this is where uh, not via the rendering agent, a request is made. Uh, by code. Hmm. Oh, okay. okay. So, so that's that's the, the that's the distinction. A request was not made by just loading the page. It was made by code within a page. Some JavaScript or or even VB script if we're doing an old uh, Internet Explorer thing. Uh, but but there was a an HTTP request. Um, another thing here that that most people don't really want to look at is, is this web socket, uh, view, you know, there, there's a lot of, I, I got into this really interesting in a, a, a an Android automation forum the other day, this, this really interesting, uh, argument with somebody's interpretation of how, 
uh, data is pushed from a server to a client, you know, for notifications and things. All HTTP requests are RESTful. That is, there is a request, a response, and a closed connection. Period. The RFC allows no connection based scenario to exist. Okay. If you need a connection where there is open communication between a server and a client, you must use a WebSocket. Okay. Yep. Um, now, when you're looking at the all, you can kind of pick those out if you're looking at, um, and, and there isn't any on, on uh, 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 AutoHotKey, but uh, no. you, you can pick them out because the request URL will start WS colon slash slash. Those are WebSocket connection requests. It's a different protocol, communication protocol. Um, but uh, the, that, that's how that's done. Now, there's also the situation where an API will make repeated HTTP calls to a server um, and then only load it when it's different, okay? That's different. That's not a push from a server. That is just a looped request until an update is found. Huh. Uh, in, important distinction. Um, WebSockets are not something most amateurs are going to do um, on their own. It's, it, it's uh, uh, a little tricky to apply, and most people don't bother. It's not necessary, uh, especially when you can just loop an HTTP request and wait for an update. Um, but anyway, so so that's 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 kind of what I was getting at, and cool. um, you, you know, really for success when you're looking at uh, the list of responses, you're you're looking at anything that starts with a two or a three. Mm -hmm. uh, fours and fives always indicate a problem. Yeah, even the threes, depending on what you're doing, are, are you, you want to know, yeah. right? You got yeah. for well, yeah. well, or, or you want to know that you were loaded from cache. Hmm. Uh, I think it's 302 is is a, a cache response. Uh, no, that's a redirect. Um, but uh, well, also, let's get back to the whole um, the V1 and V2 thing on the forum. <laughs> Sorry, I get distracted. All right, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is all. This is good. Even I learned some stuff here. I didn't know there was that WS um, app there, so that that was good to see that yeah. there. Oh, uh, I, I was going to talk about server overhead. So uh, between the server and 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 uh, between you and the server is we have this Cloudflare right. uh, web firewall, okay, that analyzes your requests and 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 does things with it. Um, but uh, as a, as a as an admin, I can come in here and I can look. Um, uh, and, and see, uh, now I picked a, picked the wrong one. Uh, I can, I can come in and, and see, uh, you know, number of requests. Uh, I can see where in the world the requests are coming from. It's a, a heat map. Now, if I pull this up frequently, I kind of start to see a trend. And if one day I come in here and we're having oh. trouble with the server and all of a sudden Malaysia is real dark, what do I think is going on? Some sort of an attack. Right. Um, so uh, you can see I, I get reports about things that Cloudflare just blocks. Well, and you helped me also on, on the automator. You know, I was getting attacked by some things, and we walked through how to spot some of these and to block them by IP address at least. Now, anyway. also, so after the Cloudflare and before the server itself, um, uh, there is a network-based uh, uh, firewall at our hosting company. Um, and, and so I have firewalls around each of the servers. We have a database and an application server, um, as, as many uh, configurations do. Um, but once it gets to the server, this is where we, we really are, are talking about our server overhead. And... Uh, 
you know, the bandwidth that is used for uh, requests. And I can see now I know that the private uh, outbound are the direct connections to uh, our database server. Right. Uh, public outbound. So there are some API calls within our server. I know that do things like um, there's some analytics analytics done around you as a visitor's IP address huh. um, for, uh, for a code based security implementation that I have. I can see what my CPU usage is like. Uh, I, I like seeing it down here under 30. <laughs> That makes me happy. Disk IO. That's that's just how much disk activity, reading and writing. So so this this when I talk about overhead, this is specifically after it's been through all of that filtering, what's actually happening on my server, so that I can determine the health of. Do I need to add more hardware? Do I need to look at uh, new potential abuse vectors, things like that? So that's what we're talking about with overhead. And when people make API requests. Since there are fewer requests, this necessarily is lower overhead. Well, in, and to get back to, I don't have it in front of me um, who had asked the question. This is the, your point is, you're going to see that traffic, whether, no matter how you disguise it, right? Right. It can be no, no matter how it's disguised, I'm still going to no. see it. It's no. still there. And, and I'm still tracking you by IP address. Yeah, so it really comes and, website. And by browser. Yes, the user agent. Yeah. So cool. Anyway. Sorry. So 